say it again, we love him. The presence in this place, Holy Spirit, come. Begin to speak in our hearts, examine our hearts, we live and go again, God. Search our hearts this afternoon, God. We come before you. You are life, you are hope, you are comfort, oh God. To you we place our trust, to you we place our hope. Oh, come on, glory, God is my 
Stop the love. 
tell us the story of it. Thank you for the life of God. Going and 
and the college of uh, evangelism is going, and all these things are going. But one thing I always ask them every Tuesday, I say, ask them now, so you are the apostle there. So can you just ask the new pastor, Pastor Sudhakar, where is he from? He said, well, he's from Kupa. No, ask him again. Ask him again until he gets it. So I feel that, <laughs> sorry, we just got it. And he said, I feel this is the time this year, 2022, is when we really need to go back to our roots. Where are you from, really? You know, I think I may have asked you guys this before, right? If you say from Vancouver, I'm going to continue to ask you <laughs> until you get it. So, so he finally asked Pastor Sudhakar enough times and you know, he got it, right? So it's very, very critical. We know where we're from. Because if you don't know where you're from, most likely you don't know who you are. I tell you, in the Bible, you always read about how they talk about, oh, Jesus of Nazareth, Abraham of Chaldeans. You know, all of the classes, the soul of classes. There's a connection between the place and the name. Right? So if you know you're truly from heaven, there's a connection between the place where you're from to your name. What? Because if you don't know you're from heaven, most likely you don't know who you are. And when you don't know who you are, you have not known what you have inherited. You don't know the rights and privileges that your King of Heaven has given to you in His Constitution called the Bible. Called the Bible. Yes. What you have inherited, if you don't know what you've inherited, how can you then go out and do what you're supposed to do and share your inheritance? So it's really important to first and foremost understand. It sounds so fundamental, but a lot of churches are missing this. Where are you really from? You gotta have to say that until you, you get it. You ask each other the same question over and over again until you really sink it. Remember before the New Year, I told you guys about opening up your mind. When Jesus says, you know, like if you believe in this, this is what will happen, or if you do this, this will... it's all about opening up your mind to receive. If your mind is the size of a small cup, that's all you're going to do. How can you believe in eternal life if your mind is closed? You're not going to receive what you refuse to receive. You need to open up your mind. When we talked about that last year before the year ended. Now this year I really want to talk about where are we from? The answer is heaven. Now, you know, last year my dad passed away, 101 years old. You know, my dog also went, 11 and a half years old. So there's a lot of discussion about life and death, right? A lot of people are asking about and so people actually came up with the question, you know, like, mm, what is really heaven? So I felt like today, since we're talking about where we came from, we really need to touch for heaven. We need to talk for heaven. Clear up some things that people may have preconceived in a closed mind. You know, you really need to open your mind. Today, you really need to open your mind. See, <clears throat> God made us in the flesh. We sang that earlier. Mm. As an extension of this invisible kingdom here on earth. It's actually a calling of heaven. And it's a governmental calling. It's not some religion. Come on. I was just worshipping earlier and then God said, why don't you read my word today? And I'm going to read it. Luke chapter 4. Mm. Luke chapter 4, verse 42 onwards to 44. Early the next morning, Jesus went up to an isolated place. And the crowd searched everywhere for him. 
And all these miracles were happening and then they were looking for him. And then when they finally found him, they begged him not to leave them. But he replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom. Did he say the good news of baptism? Did he say anything about salvation? No. He said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too. Because that is why I was sent. Oh my goodness. How could we have missed that? We made it into all kinds of things. And not about the sin. The rulership of God. The kingdom. The Basalia. The rulership of God. The authority given to us as a physical being with a legal to carry out his will. So that's where we're from. From a place of heaven. So today we want to talk about that. Where is God? Like this is so basic. We need to get to really basic stuff. Where is God? What did Jesus say? Our Father who art in heaven. Invisible kingdom, but a visible God in Jesus, right? Invisible kingdom of heaven. So when you're grafted to Jesus, you are adopted as children of God. Spiritually born again. Spiritually born again into a royal family. A holy nation set apart to co rule with Jesus. It's so crazy. So while we're here, we need to work out our salvation. You already say when you believe in Jesus, when you're adopted as children of God. Now what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Well, You work out the salvation. The big difference is you're not working for something, you're working from something. From what he already done on the cross. He loved us. He truly, truly loved us. Right? So <clears throat> people have been asking, is that really a place for heaven? Where do I go when I die? What happens in heaven? Well, let me start by saying this. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is a real place. Keep saying that until you get it. Heaven is a real place. Don't just say it and then people tell you and then you're like, okay, okay, you know, yeah, okay, I get it. No, it's a real place. It's a real place. That's what it's called. Faith. Faith is about believing in something you can't see. Until it manifests. Yeah. That's how I walk all the time. I don't know what's going to happen, but I continue to believe in healing until today. And it happens. Heaven is a real place. Invisible territory, a domain. It's a territory, it's a domain. A real kingdom with a real king. Right? The reality of this kingdom of heaven has to sink in into our open heart. If we throw someone, it's not going to sink in. It's not. Jesus came to tell us of it to reignite our identity. He really did, you know. In and through him as children of the king of heaven. That's the reason why he says, I have to go to those other villages too, because I need to preach the kingdom of heaven. That's the reason I was sent. Wow. So what happens in heaven? What is it? Huh? You had a lot of questions, huh? <laughs> Do we just worship all day and sing all day and do nothing else? Well, good thing that God King of heaven is an already God. Amen. He prepares his people. We talk about preparation. I think the new year at first. Preparation. So even for knowledge of heaven, he had to prepare. Right? He had prepared it in his word. Right? Like ignorance is actually darkness. That's why darkness cannot understand 
That's good. They're not comprehend life in John says life. You have ignorance. It's actually darkness. Mm -hmm. So light is actually knowledge. Light is knowledge. So let us first explore what the word of God tells us about heaven. Okay? So there are nine things today. I'll give this to you guys later on. You know, I'll share this in PDF or whatever. There are nine things I want to point out for heaven today. Nine things. Well, it is but we are partly correct when we say we're going to sing and praise and worship. However, there are other things we do too in heaven. Okay. Now, if you think you're going to run somewhere, no heaven's coming here. <laughs> Jesus is coming back here. Okay, there will be later on you, you learn as I go on, you learn about the new heaven and the new earth. Right? So number one, there's work to be done, there's work to do. But unlike the work on earth, it's not like, oh, I go to work, you know, I'm, I'm tired of going to that workplace, I'm, I'm just tired of doing all these things, you know. I have to do this. And it's not like that, right? It's not out of fear or strife, but out of peace and joy. Now, where do we find this? Revelations 14.13 of the New King James Version says this. Then, this, this is, this is uh, John. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. Holy Spirit. That they may rest from their labors and their works all of them. You rest from your labor, which you are laboring right now. You're not so happy about it, but your works follow you. This work that I'm telling you about is filled with joy and peace. It's not something that you are experiencing here. So it's unlike the ones that are on earth. And number two, you will serve and worship. Tirelessly. You know, sometimes we have this worship team up here or anywhere else in like the churches that we go to. You know, it seems like they're tired. <laughs> you know, I mean, to be honest, sometimes they feel like I'm tired. Just, you know, I got to be busy. Josh called me up for breakfast again or something. You know. But over there in heaven, you're going to serve and worship tirelessly. That's amazing. Tirelessly. Why? Revelation 22 3, in King James Version. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. So there is serving and there's worship, right? But you won't be tired, you won't be burdened. Does it make sense? This is, this is amazing when I'm going through all this. You'll be just filled with joy for all eternity. It's hard to comprehend right now. But you really need to comprehend of a place that is not up here. In my experience, <laughs> when I had the taste of what it was like there, it's so beautiful. This is all like dying. The day the tree, the seed grows and becomes a tree, it's already dying. You know that? We'll talk about it later. Number three, there will be a new reality in thinking. Your current thinking, out the window. There will be a new reality in thinking. Your thinking will be different. Why? In 1 Corinthians 13, 12, and KJV says this. For well, now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. What does that mean? I know in part, but then I shall know. So you really need to go to the Greek on this word know. The word know here, the Greek word is epiki nosko. That means Really know extensively. That means when you are there, you will know why you are there. 
You will know the questions that you have in your heart. There's no answer to it. Okay. Knowing things extensively, things that you can't know here. Why did this happen? Why did I? Why was he in full health? And 101. And all of a sudden, he, five days before, he, four days before he passed, he had gone to a full medical and he was flying colors. And then all of a sudden, he gets the shakes, and then all of a sudden, he's in the hospital, and 24 hours later, he's gone home to the Lord. Why? That's the difficult saying E. coli poisoning. But that doesn't answer anything on earth. You know what I'm saying? I'm just so excited because it says here, <laughs> now we see, but now we see in a mirror. We see in a mirror. Dimly, but then face to face. Face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also can know. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a lot of questions and I'm going to have answers. Extensive answers. But you know, this word epigenosto does not mean all knowing. That's reserved for our Lord. Amen. That's for our king. It's just that you're going to know things that you didn't know before. Come on. Which is exciting. Mm -hmm. That's the place where you came from. Come on. You actually can know that, you know, there's a glimpse of it here when you find out the Holy Spirit. Word of knowledge, we've all experienced it here. Yes. Right? Prophetic vision, we get it here. Fruit of the Holy Spirit, we get it here. Come on. Mm. Excuse me, Pastor. Yeah. Battery change. Battery change. Okay. Epigenosco. Hallelujah. To really know extensively. Remember, it does not mean absolute knowledge. Okay? That's reserved for the big guy, the king of heaven. Now, this extensive knowledge that God's going to give us is actually a reward for us. It's not a reward for us, you know. Like, you know, it's, it's you get through all this and you stay true to his word, you're grounded in his word. And then he's going to get home. Amazing. Number four. Some people ask me, like, you know, when am I going to stay? Is that going to be a condo somewhere in heaven? In Isaiah 65 21 and KJV. Isaiah 65 21, it is, they shall build houses and inhabit them. Oh, hallelujah. He said, you will buy houses. Sorry, if you're a realtor. He <laughs> says, you will build houses. Build houses. And they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Oh my goodness. You're going to build your house and you're going to plant those things. And you're going to plant the fruit. I don't know. I, I, I'm planting mangoes and lychee for sure. I don't know about you guys. You know, I'm eating this Peruvian grapes, and I think a lot of things are being grown in, in Peru right now. Even blueberry. Mm -hmm. You know why? You snooze, you lose. In BC, we had all the, you know, the, the, the blueberries, but we didn't pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like in kingdom mentality. Like, if God has given you something and you don't know anything about it, He's going to raise something else up to do it. Seriously, look at look at what happened to Queen Esther. When Mordecai told me, told her, this, if you don't do this, God's going to get somebody else to do it. Perhaps it's for such a time as this that you may queen to do this. Mm. We will have houses. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to build your own. Just imagine your house built. Imagine living in this new earth, perfect, 
with your beautiful home and your fantastic being. I don't know, you know, it's like, you know, you just have to dream about it and go, this is amazing stuff. I don't want to complain anymore about things on earth. Why are you complaining? You're not from here to transform this place to that place where you came from, right? And if you get to know where you came from, you understand the culture and the, the way things are done. This is what you're supposed to do here. Stop complaining, right? And then Jesus says this in John 14, 1 to 3, New King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you're not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's amazing. Did you, did you hear? Is it not there? Did you read that? That's a good promise from the king. Going to prepare everything and come get it. Come and get you. Come get you too. Jesus himself is coming. He says, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what that means? Can I tell you something? Now, this is a question people will have. But will I see my loved one? That's exactly your answer right there. That means you're going to be seeing your loved ones. Come on. <laughs> you know the song Reunited? <laughs> <laughs> I love that song, you know, when I was a kid. We used to go camping with my friends and they come back from England and wherever I used to be stuck in Malaysia. <laughs> but that song was sweet. Because we were good friends. Good friends are important. You know, keep that friendship. Don't lose friendship. Be intentional. Reunited. If your believers serve the Lord, then we will see them again after this temporal phase and assignment and training has been done. Amazing. You know, when the Thessalonians in the Bible were grieving after they lost some loved ones, Paul wrote this. Paul wrote this to them. 1 Thessalonians 4 16 and 18. New King James Version, for the Lord Himself will descend from heaven. Remember, descend from heaven, heaven, heaven in physical kingdom, extension here, the physical earth, with the physical being. Right? For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Reunite is so good. Come on, we got to be excited about this. You can't be just thinking, you know what, this is the end. No. King David himself knew that he would be reunited with his dead kid. Do you remember that? 2 Samuel 4, 22, 23. When he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live? But now he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. You will see your loved ones. Relax. Okay. All you need to do is bring them into the kingdom. Tell them about the kingdom of heaven. Stop preaching all kinds of religious stuff. No point. That's why people get so mad at us when we're, you know, like Christians are running around. If you're preaching religion, you might as well go and say, you know what, my color is better than your color. They grew up with that religion. And you bring another. You go to India, there's 33 million gods. 
You know why India is growing like crazy? I'm telling those guys, I say, wherever you go, you preach the kingdom of heaven. You tell them where you came from. If I didn't tell you where I came from, if I didn't tell you I'm from Malaysia and you've never been to my house and tasted like curry, <laughs> ah, good for you guys. You wouldn't know and you wouldn't have a taste of Malaysia. If I can tell you to, I turned blue for Malaysia and you won't get it because I don't live it. And you never experience it. That's transformation, guys. You have to live the culture of where you came from, heaven. And really live it out, like not just talk, 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 you know, and then never live it out. No one really know. So we are those guys. Those Christians they go to church Sundays, and that's it. They rush off for dim sum after that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> I've been I've been going around to so many places, you know, just just a good old friend. In so many places around the world and. I realize we are so off, so off, because we are preaching all the means when we should be preaching the end, the kingdom of heaven. We spend so much time on baptism, so much time on salvation. Those things are good. I'm not saying they're bad, but they are means to the end. If Jesus was sent here to die, and because it was prophesied, and because God's ordered it. But think about it, think about it. If it was prophesied that he should die on the sky train, he would have died on the sky train. He still died for us on the sky train. Am I rocking your world or getting mad at me? It's okay. You get it. Sooner or later, you're going to get it. But it's not about those things. It's about a kingdom, an invisible kingdom with a, with a king. Oh my goodness. The king is good. Listen to all these things we're talking about. Heaven. It's so good. Right? Now, number five. Do you still have the emotions? Right? You know, God himself has emotions. Were created in his image and likeness. Since the Holy Spirit grieves, he has emotions. Right? Well, but what about bad emotions? Bad emotions. Do you, do you get bad emotions? Will I still have them? We used to be sad and crying. Well, let's see what John saw ahead in Revelation. Revelation 21 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. No more snow, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Are you guys okay? It seems like I don't want to hear about all these things. You gotta hear it. That's where you came from. All these painful things caused by sins, God will stop them all. Finish. He will make all things new. So no, you will not experience suffering and pains anymore in the new heaven and the new earth. Number six, you won't miss the old stuff in heaven. <laughs> I like this one. You won't miss the old stuff in heaven. You know, let me give you an example. You know, we, used to, we were flying a lot everywhere, in my wife, for ministry, and then she put us in economy class. And one day I said to her, I said, Sharon, could we just please, on long haul, like, fly business class? <laughs> and you put us on business class and we arrive in good shape in India. I was like, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Because, you know, in India, they make you preach from A to B and then take you out again for healing and this and that healing ministry. You, know? you don't sleep to do, maybe, you know, it's like, you fly, you can apply at least business class. Well, let me tell you something. Heaven is a far greater reality than the business class. If you have not flown business class, try once, okay? Maybe even go with this a bit. You know, anyways, whatever. Go with it's, another, <laughs> it's another whole reality. And, you know, the thing is, just go. If you have to fly, fly. 
apply target distance plus points. Then you, you will enjoy it. So now all I'm saying is you will not miss the whole earth and its problems and its issues. I'll just give you an example. You won't miss the economy once you apply distance plus. Seriously, you got menu that you can choose from. You want fried egg? You're gonna get fried egg. It's not gonna be like, oh, here, you're gonna eat this. Right? Except for some airlines, I have to tell you, I won't say the names of them, but they themselves are afraid of the food you're serving. Anyway, so you will not miss the whole earth, its problems and issues. I said 65, 17, 18, and KJV says, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered. Oh my goodness. I love that. Well, the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as the rejoicing and the people are joy. Mm, boom, erase. Honest things you don't want to remember, like that, that gone. You don't feel good about it? Oh, you guys are all good. Dealing with COVID. <laughs> good old friend that gossips all the time. Don't remember. That's good. You still pray for that. You have to pray for your friends, okay? Continue to pray. I'm praying. Pray for people all the time. Sometimes on earth they seem like they're very nasty to you. You pray for them. That's the time when you're going to pray for them. Pray. Pray in a good way. Pray for their salvation. Pray for them to have the peace of the Lord in their heart. Pray for the love of the Holy Spirit to infill their heart. Don't get mad at people and pray them away. They're dead. To do the transformation in you. Did I ever tell you a story of a catfish? Catfish? No? People were trying to import codfish from the uh, Atlantic to the West, and then every time they bring them over here, the taste changes, taste bad, right? So they thought, okay, well, let's just fly them in fresh in the ocean water, and they still tasted bad. So finally, there was an old man that told me, it's a true story. Old man said, you know what? I'm going to go fishing. He says, you got to put a catfish in the tank. Why? Because the catfish is the natural predator of the codfish. Oh, you keep them fresh. So sometimes, you got a catfish in your life. Don't bring them away. Get <laughs> them to stir you up so that you taste good. <laughs> My wife does that to me, man. I'm driving today. I have all people watching at home laugh. I'm driving today and I'm like, relate. And these guys are eating all so sweet time. <laughs> it's mom. Okay. I remember the catfish though. <laughs> this guy in front of me, catfish. I'm getting refined. And he's going to slow down even more so I get more refined. In patience. And in prayer. Pray for that person, man. Stop praying for him to go away and disappear from your life, especially your boss. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Number seven. Do we have a new body in heaven? Do you ever have a question? Mm. Some people tell me, you know, when I meet them, they say, oh, we'll just end up in spirits. Or sometimes they, they even have this, this thought, the idea that they're going to be angels. Listen, I met Christians that think that, you know, all these things. And no, it's not true, okay? God has a plan for a new, transformed, glorified body for us. To be reunited with our souls, with our spirit. So a body that will never grow old. I like that. Right? Don't you like that? A body that never gets tired, never gets sick. I think COVID is a kind of body. But you know, I love that kind of body. He will be glorified by Jesus' glorified body. Jesus allowed for the disciples to see him in that glorified body. In 
the transfiguration. Beautiful. Beautiful. First Corinthians 15, 42, 45 says this. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body. It is raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. Beautiful. A spiritual body that cannot die, made for heaven, made for eternity. Mm. You're not happy. You should be happy. I'm happy. When I read that, I'm so happy. <laughs> and imagine all of this and just doing one thing. Just doing one thing, bro. You believe in Jesus. That's it. You know what he did? When you believe in Jesus, you open your mind. I'm ready to receive everything that my king in heaven said about me in my constitution, from the home country where I'm from. I'm in this host country, but my home country is there. I'm here as a representation of my home country in this full glory. With the deposit of the Holy Spirit. You're the embodiment of the kingdom here. Catch that? I hope you did. Our new spiritual bodies will be like that body of the resurrected Christ body. Special body, man. Don't ache. And Joyce, if you are here, you would have you would have said, Ooh, wow. <laughs> she likes to say that. <laughs> You're watching from home. Number eight. We will live in a whole new world. Whole new world. <laughs> we will live in a whole new world. Not just heaven. All that you talk about heaven. You got world too. Revelation 21, 1 to 5. John the Apostle was allowed to see the future, and this is his report. This is his report. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Man. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Bad for you, see, good lovers. <laughs> then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be with his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Ah, yeah, so amazing. <laughs> you know, all those bad things you won't remember. Remember, I told you? You won't remember. God. <laughs> oh, yeah, we forgot already all the bad things. That's why I don't remember bad things. Why are you remembering bad things right now, even here on earth? Come on, your culture is such that you don't remember bad things. No bad things is even supposed to penetrate you. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to declare that over you right now. Nothing that is not of the King of Heaven is allowed to go near you, sister. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, fire. I don't know. Fire. Revelation 21, read in your own time. Okay? Number nine, last point. Heaven is our real home. So, where are you from? I don't tell me Vancouver yet. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, sister? Where are you from? You sure? You don't sound convinced. You don't sound so convinced. Yeah, man. How about you? You know, heaven. Hallelujah. And you, sister, where are you from? Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
That's why everywhere Jesus went, he declared the kingdom of heaven. He didn't need to say anything else. The kingdom of heaven is near or here. We had a social meeting, 600 people in uh, Surrey. How many years ago now, George? Yes. Three years, two years ago. All I said was the kingdom of heaven. Then everybody said, I said, do you believe that? They say, yes, can you say that? Kingdom of heaven is here. Everybody could do it. Everybody. Everybody. Demons came out. Why? It's a superior reality. Come on. You don't need to buy houses. You just build whatever you want. It's superior. Mm. Heaven is a real world. Oh. You know, sometimes people, when I talk to people, they say, no, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. And <laughs> say that everyone's coming here, but you know, anyhow. <laughs> You're not sure because you never knew you were from heaven. Oh. I don't know, is it preached like that? Or anyone listening out there, are you preaching that right now? Tell your congregation they're from heaven. Until their mind opens and believe it, they're just saying it. Too many people are mimicking, mimicking, mimicking. We see it in ministry. But when you see the manifestation of heaven, yes. huh? Philippines, remember? Old stadium built. Hallelujah. <laughs> because why? Their mind is open to receive. Ooh, hallelujah. If you never knew your citizenship, you don't know what you inherit oh, because you never knew me from heaven. If you don't know you're a citizen of heaven, just because you don't know the rights and privileges, you pray all kinds of prayer. You don't even know prayer is a petition. It's a form you fill out and send to the king, to his government. Yes. And you send an empty form every time. Because you don't know the word. What he talks about you, he says about you, what your rights and privileges are, what are things that you're not supposed to be saying and doing. Yes. So you send back an empty form. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven. It's an empty form. It was a template given to us by Jesus. Why? Because the disciples say, teach us how to pray. Yes. You think God is one dimensional? Come on, teach us how to pray. Here, here's the template. Now you fill out what I told you about you. Let's go. Fill it out today. We're going to fill it out today. I was walking in this, I didn't even know until the Lord told me, right? 2020. Not all bad things came from 2020. <laughs> God spoke to me. It was September, yeah. and then I woke Sharon up at 3 a.m. in the morning. I said, Oh my goodness, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling me this thing to you, know? Yeah, go away. <laughs> wake up. And then I think the next, of course, I hit Josh and Joyce. Oh my God, come on. And then we had a podcast, and we had, we had this whole thing. We had a grace group meeting, the whole thing, and then more people are now understanding about the kingdom of heaven. It's a true kingdom. Fill out what he says about you. You go to court, you know. Mm -hmm. You go to court, the court of heaven. You go to court every time you have an audience with the king. The king is also the judge. You go to court. Mm -hmm. And then you tell the king, the judge, um, I'm representing myself. Are you serious? Okay, so what are you here petitioning about? I don't really know, but I have this problem. No, but what are you petitioning? What did I say about you? What evidence did you bring from the Constitution before the judge so that the judge can pass judgment? Uh, 
people start crying. No. In the law court, you start crying. I've seen it before. Take a recess, five minute recess, go compose yourself, come back again. The court is for evidence, not for emotions. Stop it. No more emotion. Today we're going to do it. We're going to petition the king. And he hears us. He's a good king. I walked it for years. I didn't understand. But today I do. Because I was just doing it. Because the Holy Spirit is leading me. I would declare and decree. Declare and decree. Didn't even know. But today I do. And I'm telling everybody. And I see results and transformation. Why? Because they are petitioning Katharina. They're no longer giving blank forms. You want to immigrate to Canada? You get the form and you submit the form without filling it up? You won't come in. <laughs> Simple as that. When you understand the kingdom and the concept of what God talks about, his kingdom, God said, God, collective, the word, set, thinking, collective thinking of God. The word is God. That's the collective thing. The word is God. The word. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> we came here to influence. Amen, brother? We came here to influence and transform culture to a heavenly culture. And that's your home culture. And that's your home culture. I hope this has blessed you. Yes. You know, like today, we just want to talk about where you came from. Next week, we'll probably talk more about who you really are. And then we're going to talk about your inheritance and we're going to talk about your imperatives. Yeah. Some of you may have thought this before, but if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're from, you don't know who you are, you don't know who you are, you don't know your inheritance. If you don't know your inheritance, you cannot do anything, nothing, if you don't know what your constitution says. These are your rights. Can you go anywhere and say you're a baby? The Lord of us say, oh, where are you from? Canada? You Canadian? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. First thing about your constitution. And then you complain about our Prime Minister. You want to complain properly? Know your constitution. I don't want to go into politics, but <laughs> <laughs> it's kingdom mentality. Kingdom mentality. If you don't know, you're just wasting time. Really wasting time. Amen. Amen. So bless, 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 bless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those who are watching at home, bless you. Healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have communion. Every time we meet, we have communion at Grace Club. We're before the King. By the way, the Constitution also has commands. We must be obedient to his command. You know, when you're disobedient to a king in a kingdom, you know what happens to you? It's called high treason. That's what happened to Adam. High treason means death. That's why the wages of sin is death. Oh, hallelujah. The king commanded us to take communion in remembrance of him as often. So here we are, we're going to take it, we're going to pass the plate around, like I always want people with this new communion, it's hard to open and not to, <laughs> just one of those with bread and wine together, just be very careful when you open it. It is so good to see you guys. Yeah. So good to see you. Yes. No, I'm serious. It's so good to see you two sitting together. You don't know my heart. Justin knows. He knows, he knows my heart. It's eternity. You know? We have to live. The kingdom concept is eternity. I don't want to just dwell on my today, yesterday. It's forever. Jesus is forever. Amen. I just feel like there's healing, even for him. There's healing. Hallelujah.
Lord, let us take the bread together. Body of Christ in Jesus' name. Yeah. 